Skaters constantly push the limit for what we think is possible to do on a skateboard. From huge drops to massive rails longer than Nick Cannon's list of baby mamas, today I'll be covering some of the biggest and most impressive tricks ever done in skateboarding. So without taking up any more time, let's just get right into the video and remember that these tricks were done by professionals, so not attempt anything you see in this video. First of all, I'm going to start out with the biggest drops because, I mean, you saw this thumbnail and you saw this clip at the beginning, so I bet you want to know who this skater is and how high was that drop? Or is it even real? But first, let me give you a quick history on the biggest drops in skateboarding. Realistically, the first drop in skateboarding was probably off a curb on a sidewalk. Fast forward a few decades to 1997 and things have gone a long way from jumping off curbs and by now jumping down stair sets and grinding rails is a typical thing to see in skateboarding. Then here comes Jamie Thomas, a young pro skater working on his part for Zero Skateboard's Thrill of It All. One day he's at Point Loma High School looking for spots to skate when he sees this massive stair set. His intrusive thoughts must have got the best of him because for some reason he decided to jump it. A 14 foot 3 inch drop from the very top stair straight to flat ground. Roughly 17 feet in total if you account for the height of his ollie. This feat marked a turning point, a new benchmark for skaters around the world. If you could do this and be still okay, what else could you do and actually land? It was arguably because of Jamie Thomas that skaters started skating bigger obstacles. Skaters such as Josh Casper, Don Nguyen, Ali Bulala, Diego Bucciarini, Corey Duffel, Ryan Sheckler, Andrew Reynolds, and most notably known for big drops, Aaron Jaws Hamoki, who is currently in a league of his own. I mean, I could easily make this entire video just about him, because even in his early days, he was jumping stuff that nobody else would even think of doing. But I already covered that in my skate stories about Jaws, so you guys can go watch that if you want. The issue of most of these early tricks that were landed is the lack of precise measurement. Without someone verifying the height of a tape measure, it is difficult to determine the exact magnitude of these drops. In addition, many of these drops are in from stair sets, so you need to take into account how long it is too. But just to cover what I could find, Wallingberg, one of the oldest iconic gaps, is 4.3 feet high and 7.5 feet long. The MACBA 4 block is 6 feet tall, 7 feet long. The Atlanta 5 block is 7.5 feet tall and 11.5 feet long, or 7 feet tall and 22 feet long if you include the curb. The Nashville Legislative Stair Set is 8.5 feet tall, 19.5 feet long. El Toro is about 10 feet tall and 17 feet long. The Jaws blocks are 13 feet high and a staggering 27.5 feet long. And the iconic Leon 25 is 14.7 feet high and 21 feet long. The one thing you need to know when you take these numbers into account is you cannot just roll off the edge. You need to ollie which on average adds about another two to three feet to the total height. To this day, the Leon 25 stands uncontested as the biggest drop ever done to flat that was landed in skateboarding. But in 2022, Jace DeTomasimo was the only one to get close to beating the record, falling short by only a few inches when he ollied this gap at 14 feet, six inches, which has now been dubbed as the Miami Leap of Faith. It's crazy to think that a trick that was seen as impossible 25 years ago has now not only been matched, but also surpassed. Oh, and this. Well, that's gotta be like, what, 20, maybe 30 feet, right? But a stout observer might notice that he landed into the slope of a curb, so technically it's not the flat, so it doesn't count, right? Well, sorry to break it to you, that would definitely count, but also, this video is fake. It was an April Fool's joke made by skater and CGI artist Jesse Shane. After all, a drop like this is just not possible. It goes against physics. But then again, that's what was said when Jamie Thomas did the leap of faith. So before I continue on to the next section of the biggest rail tricks, I'll leave you with this comment from Jaws. 15 feet is about the limit, at least for me. Below 15 feet, the feet will sting, the legs will sting, the knees will sting. 
but once it goes past 15 feet, it goes into the hips and the back and like shoulders. Who knows? We'll see. I think the future uh, little kids are just gonna be molded into jumping. Maybe we might see some 20 foot drops in the future. I hope so. Onto the biggest and craziest rails. For these, the length is not really the ultimate deciding factor for how buck the trick is. All rails have different steepnesses, kinks, curves, and unusual features. With rails, it's not just about how big you can go, it is also about how long you can keep your balance and stay on it. And also, even more importantly, what trick you can do on it. So before I get into the real juice of it, I'm gonna have a few honorable mentions, beginning with Jamie Foy. Jamie is known for his insane street skateboarding abilities, more specifically, his talent on rails. It would be a crime to not include him in this video. I mean, he did a front crook on El Toro first try. I could mention a hundred different rails that he's done that are impressive, but the one that sticks out to me the most is actually one of the smallest rails that he's done. But the trick they did on it has never before been done in a skateboarding competition, if not probably ever. Of course, I'm talking about his front side blunt to nose blunt at Tampa Pro. I won't go into the details for exactly why this is so impressive, but the crowd's reaction should speak for itself. <laughs> Basically, he did one of the hardest tricks on the rail back to back, but also did a 180 in between them. Just absolutely mind blowing. My next honorable mention is Chase Webb's Super Mutant Rail. Chase Webb is known for skating some really insane rails. From really long rails to short but gnarly, to rails with gaps in the middle, Chase can do it all. But nothing has put up a battle against him quite like this rail. It has two kinks and on the second one, it turns 90 degrees onto another kink at the bottom. Nyjah, the king of rails, explained the difficulty of this trick the best. Definitely one of the gnarliest things, not only that he's done, but done on rails and kink rails in general. Doing a trick like that where there's so much going on, it's just so gnarly. And as soon as you're on the ground, you already got to be thinking about getting on the front board, and there's just so much that could go wrong. To say it was a challenge is an understatement. It was a war. Over the course of three days and a total of 12 hours, Chase Webb battled with this rail, getting beat up in every way imaginable. There were just too many factors going against him. But in the end, he was able to finally get the front board slide and land one of the most difficult rails ever done in skateboarding. Up next is Dane Berman's Municipal Death Rail. The only reason it's an honorable mention is because I covered it recently in another video. But seriously, this is one of the gnarliest rails ever done in skateboarding. Because not only is it a huge kinked rail with a 20 foot drop off the side, but also because once Dane gets to the bottom, he still has an El Toro sized drop to handle. This was without a doubt one of the hardest battles ever fought over a trick, and the fact that he was even able to do it without crippling himself is amazing on its own. And for the last honorable mention is Henry Gartland's insane kinked rail. This one is once again only an honorable mention because I had it in a previous video, but man, look at the size of that thing. Not to mention all of those kinks. It took Henry multiple trips to the spot to find land this trick, but the end result was worth it, and I still think that this trick has not been surpassed. I mean, just finding a rail that has more kinks than this is a challenge within itself. Anyway, that is all for the honorable mentions, on to the final trick. And it's not exactly a trick itself. Instead, it's more of a man. Nyjah Houston. I'm sure most of you already know who Nyjah is. After all, he is the skateboarding equivalent of Ronaldo, with a jockey frat boy persona that is disliked by many core skaters, but also respected simply because of his pure skill and talent. After Tony Hawk, Nyjah is perhaps one of the most well-known skaters to non-skaters, and that's for a good reason. Nyjah, put simply, is a very well-rounded and consistent skater. He dominates competitions because of this, but also some people complain that because he is so consistent, his style looks robotic because it is too perfect. But besides his impressive SLS gold medal collection, his talent skating rails is perhaps the biggest thing that sets him apart from all other skaters. There is almost nobody that can match the size and difficulty of the rail tricks that he does, and it's been that way for over a decade now. Even as a little kid, Nigel was showing up the pros of that time. 
But it wasn't really until his video for Real Street 2012 that Niger really got recognized as a legend for the rails that he was skating, ending with him winning $50,000 after getting gold for his part. And with a quick glance, it's easy to see why he's won. Still, over 10 years later, every single trick holds up to the modern skateboarding standard and is wildly impressive. There are people that can kinda catch up with Nyjah in his video parts, but Nyjah is the one who's been setting the standard for years. Which brings me to the biggest video to come from Nyjah, Till Death. There is a reason this video has 10 million views on YouTube, which is a record within itself if I'm not mistaken. I mean, can anyone name a skateboarding part or a video that has over 10 million views? Please leave it down in the comments below. This video features many groundbreaking tricks for skateboarding, most of which are done on rails that most skaters would be even too scared to think about doing a simple board slide on. It's better for me just to show you rather than explain, but by far my favorite trick in this video was his 180 turn mid-grind. I honestly don't even know what it's called, but I still remember just how shocked I was when I saw it for the first time. The balance and control that this requires is unhuman. Perhaps the most notable trick of that whole part was this rail that I like to refer to as the bush rail. This is not just some long rail, and it is not just a kinked rail but it is also a very shallow rail. This makes skating it exponentially harder because it requires your balance to be perfect for way longer than on any other rail. And the slower you grind, the harder it is to stay balanced. Hence the name I've given to it, the bush rail, because Nyjah fell into the bushes next to a rail countless times. After this part, Nyjah went on hiatus for about five years spending most of his time winning SLS competitions, shilling worthless NFTs to his followers, partying with influencers, and skating in Hollywood mansions. Then, just a few months ago, he came out with a brand new part. And just as before, he raised the bar for skateboarding once again. To go over all the insane tricks in his video Need That could be a video within itself, because almost every trick is extraordinary. I'll be the first to say that I'm not the biggest fan of Nyjah, but I would also be a liar if I said that this video didn't leave my jaw on the floor on multiple occasions. Obviously, most of all, with his ender, which starts with a 50-50 grind up a 5-stair rail that goes through a flat kink and then back down a 21-stair rail. How he managed to find this spot is beyond me. Up with a close second to that trick is this super long front crook up the long side of this rail and then down in the 50-50 on the short steep part. But what's even more crazy in my opinion is the extras that were cut out of this video. I really wish he landed this curved kink purple rail, but it seems like he got a little bit too beat up to try it again. Anyway, I suggest that you check out the full videos that I featured in my video as it is best to experience them in the original form they came in, but now hopefully you can also gain a greater understanding and appreciation for these tricks. All the links are down below in the description, and let me know if you think I missed something that I should include in the next video. As for now, that's all I have. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.